everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. And today I like to talk about reading the French classics, uh, which was one of my series and goals for 2019 was to just read a stack of books that uh, some of them were very clearly like classical <laughs> classic books um, and others were not. There were more modern recent releases that have been translated from the French into um, English that I wanted to get to. So I was using the word classics very, very loosely. Uh, but either way, I wanted to do an update. Uh, a few people had asked for an update and I just hadn't been ready because I knew I hadn't done as well as I wanted to do. And sure enough, when I sat down to do the list of books that I had read uh, from the original video that I did earlier in the year, um, it didn't look really great. <laughs> So that's what I'll do. I will first start with the books that I did read uh, in 2019 um, and then I will share the books that I did not read that I will obviously be rolling over to 2020 and adding um, more kind of French classics to that list because um, it is kind of a larger project for me to keep uh, reading some of these books. Um, I've been adding to them in 2019. I really want to get to it and then, um, you know, I'll get to what my plan is for 2020. So let's start with a book that I'm currently reading. Um, if I have the video review up for it uh, now, by the time this video goes up, I will, I will link it down below. But it is The Perfect Nanny by Leila Slimani. So uh, this is what I mean by interpreting the word classics very loosely. Like this was a much more recent bestseller, uh, but I'm including it in this stack of books. Uh, so uh, I won't say much about it because I'll have a dedicated video to it coming up. Another book that I did read and finish um, in 2019 was Sweet Frances by Irene Nemirovsky. I really enjoyed this and I got to talk a lot about uh, France during World War II in the video that I did dedicated to this. So if you're interested, um, go check it out. Um, it's one of the most viewed videos on my channel, so uh, yes. The next book was a book that was not originally on the list, but I added in 2019 and I was able to get to it. It's very short, uh, but this is Bonjour Tristesse by Françoise Sagan. Um, uh, again, I do have dedicated videos for all of these books. I enjoyed this one and uh, there's a lot that like connected to some of my research and the history that I teach um, in here. Uh, a book that you're going to see in another video because it was one of the most disappointing books of 2019 was The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, overall, the reading experience was good because I participated in the read-along for it that Mara over at Books Like Whoa well hosted for this book um, and I got to meet a lot of people that are also kind of uh, love uh, reading French classics and love kind of uh, French language and French culture. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is a very boring book. <laughs> like for chapters and chapters nothing happens. Uh, there was still a lot to discuss and a lot of really interesting uh, aspects of it, but it was disappointing because I hadn't realized um, how boring it would, it would be. Um, I've never seen the Disney movie and apparently it just does not uh, relate a lot to the movie, but I am glad that I got to it in 2019 and this was not in the original list of classics that I had. Uh, last book that I read and finished in 2019 was um, A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabot. This is the first in the Mirror Visitor series. I had ambiguous feelings about this. I loved the world. There were aspects about the characters, especially the male lead, that really rubbed me the wrong way. Still, I'm going to continue um, with the series because the world just really captured my attention. So having said that, uh, now's a good time to go into um, the books that I am rolling over to 2020 and adding, uh, adding to that list of, of classics. Uh, my plan is, I really <laughs> put quite a bit of thought into how I was going to approach this. I think I was not as successful as I wanted to be in 2019 because I didn't have a plan. It was just kind of like a read. French classics in 2019 um, and I realized I need much more of a plan in order to be successful. 
um, I thought about doing what I've seen a lot of people do really successfully, which is like put all the names of books into a jar and each month pick one. Um, I might still do that, but I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm a mood reader, so I need a little bit more flexibility. And what I thought I would do is just commit here on this video to everyone that follows me that I would do at least one French classic per month in 2020 and that there would be an individual video reviewing this book. So each month there'd be one video, one book read, and then I have flexibility of which book it is, but committing to one book every month, minimum. Some months because some books are shorter, I might be more. Uh, so that's what I think I'm going to go uh, with uh, for now. So now I want to share what books are on that list. Uh, and that way, if you have a preference, like if you're like, oh, I really want to hear your thoughts on a particular book, then I might, you know, move go get to it sooner um, rather than later. Um, one book that is not particularly high on the list, uh, but is rolling over from the original video is Emile Sola's The Lady's Paradise. I love Sola. Um, I love uh, the Rucco Maca. And um, I've already read uh, Lady's Paradise, uh, but it was years ago. I like to get back to it, read it again, um, and continue reading more Sola. So this one is definitely on the list. Another one that I don't think this was on the original list, but um, I did purchase it in 2019 is Jean Paul Sartre's um, Nausea. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Sartre is one of those writers that uh, is not like he has never really captured my attention. Um, unfortunately, I prefer Simone de Beauvoir, but I like to read more Sartre. Mm -hmm. So I am. I picked this one up. It's not very long, but it's probably going to be a little bit more heavy um, because it's got a lot more philosophy um, in it. Uh, but yeah, I do plan on getting to this one. Uh, another kind of small one that I've got here is Candide by Voltaire, another one of those books that I've read in the past. Uh, on this one, it hasn't been that much long, uh, it, like it hasn't been that long since I read it, but um, I like to read it again and I have this really gorgeous edition of it from Penguin Classics. This is the deluxe edition. Um, I think it's really, really pretty. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to get through to a few of the chunksters here. This is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Um, the uh, DD over at Brown Go Reading just did a read along for this one. Uh, and I am kicking myself for not having joined that group because uh, they had a lot of fun uh, reading this. I uh, joined into the live and just, they really enjoyed reading the book. I know I'm going to like it and I just need to get to it. So I'm thinking I might either do this one in January or leave it for like the summer months which is when I have a lot more like uninterrupted reading time because of my work schedule. So there we go. Um, another <laughs> chunkster is The Three Musketeers. Um, and uh, I loved this edition of it. And this was a book that I carried around in middle school for months and months never <laughs> could get past like the first uh, 100 pages uh, but uh, I think now that I'm older I can, I can better handle it so uh, I this one is definitely on the list of books that I really want to get to in uh, 2020. All right, I'm going to reach in, be reaching down below here for a few more of these. Um, I have my little like reading book cart where I'm keeping all of these uh, French classics. Um, so the next one up here is um, Albert Camus's L'Étranger, The Stranger. I have this in French, um, and so I'm going to go ahead and read it in French. I realized that I actually have it in several different languages. I have it in Spanish and I have it in English, so maybe... <laughs> We'll just read all three of them at some point. Um, Camus uh, is an interesting writer and, uh, you know, and when I get to it, a book that I'm definitely, this is at the top of my TBR of French classics, The Phantom of the Opera uh, by Gaston Leroux. Uh, I had a student read this about a year ago, really loved it, and I love the way she connected it to um, kind of uh, historical elements. And I've been to the Opéra Garnier, so I am, I think I'm gonna enjoy reading this one. 
another book that's a rollover from the 2019 uh, list is Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. Um, you know, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this one. The student that I had who read this uh, did a really good job in their paper on it, uh, which made me excited to read it. Um, so we'll see. This one uh, is one of those that, again, it loosely interprets the word classics because this was a recent published a book. This is The Silent Boy. Uh, the main reason I'm including it here um, is because it is set in the French Revolution. There's not a whole lot of books set in the French Revolution um, in English, so I, I'm putting it in here because I definitely want to get to it. It looks like it's a mystery thriller set in the French Revolution, uh, so we shall see. I'm adding it here. For now, I might decide to kick it off later, but there we go. All right, uh, after reading Sweet Frances, I found it in my used bookstore, uh, Fire in the Blood by Irina Mirovsky, and um, I know that I don't know very much about this one, uh, but it's fairly short, and having enjoyed Sweet Frances, I thought I would go ahead and add this one to the list. Next up is a series of one, two, three, four books by Simone de Beauvoir that again, I got really lucky and found them all at my used bookstore. And they are in pretty good quality. Like I can tell that these are older editions, uh, but they were cheap and it, they don't look like, you know, torn up and like heavily read. Um, so I'll go through um, each one of these. Um, the, this one at the top is The Woman uh, Destroyed. Then we have When Things of the Spirit Come First. We have The Blood of Others and A Very Easy Death. I really enjoyed reading Simone de Beauvoir. I have a limited knowledge of what each of these deals with. Like one I think is um, dealing with the the death, with death obviously, and I think it's the death of her mother. A couple of these are set during World War II and then a few afterward. Um, so, uh, like I said, I really enjoy Simone de Beauvoir. I think uh, another book that I might end up adding to uh, the Simone de Beauvoir pile is The Second Sex. I've read The Second Sex, uh, but I like to get back to it. I like teaching it in class, and I always assign just small parts of it, but I'm considering at some point um, assigning the whole thing. So uh, for that, I want I would want to reread it and see if it would work for me. And um, adding to this list, again, this one, I don't think it's probably very fair to include this one. Um, it's called Enchanté by Gita Trelis. And um, again, it's one of those YA a book, fantasy books set during the French Revolution, and that's the only reason I'm adding it to this list. I don't think the author is French. I think she is... Um, oh... It is not clear. <laughs> it says she is um, born in Sweden to Italian and Swedish uh, parents. Either way, because there's, I don't have a lot of books that are fiction set in the French Revolution, I'm adding it to this pile. Uh, these n next three here, the last three, uh, the first here is the book two in the Mirror Visitor series, so The Missing of Claire de Lune, so I will be getting to this one. Um, even though it's long, I found that it read really fast and really easy, so um, I am, that's going to be near, near the top of the pile. And these last two I think I'm really going to love. The first one is Mama, What Are We Called Now? by Jacqueline Miss Neil Amar. So this is a World War II diary um, slash memoir and I am really looking forward to getting to, to this one um, because it's set in World War II. I kind of want to be in the right mood for it so that I can appreciate it for, uh, for what it is. And the last book on the list is um, a Marguerite Duras's The Lover. So I love Dura. I just love her writing, how emotional it is. Like I think she's really good at capturing feelings, emotions, um, and um, having them read beautifully on the page. Um, I've heard a lot about The Lover, but I've never read it. Um, so I finally want to get to this one in 2020. It's pretty short too, um, but uh, probably like um, hard to read in terms of like the emotions. So um, 
yeah, this one will be probably somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. I don't know. Maybe I'll get to this sooner because the more I think about this book, the more I really just want to read it. So that is it. Those are my French classics that I want to get to in um, 2020. Hopefully I'll do better than I did in 2019 because these were all the ones that were in 2019 and I really wish that this pile um, had been bigger. So that is why I'm committing to making sure that there are at least 12 books when I do another update at the end of 2020. So uh, that is it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. And again, uh, let me know if, you know, you want me to get to any of these uh, quicker. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.